Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to My Deep Guide. In today's how-to video for books platform, which encompasses most or all of the books devices out there, I'm going to be addressing like a series of steps and tips and tricks and setups and options that you can toggle and set up to optimize your books to work as best as possible for MDO, which is My Daily Organizer, which is a yearly, quarterly, monthly, blah, blah, blah organizer that uh, is essentially a document that you do a lot of handwriting annotations on. And when you do that on different platforms, you're going to encounter different issues such as palm rejections and, and um, yeah, things like that or formatting and uh, all sorts of different things. And the solutions are different on each platform. And on books, there's a series of specific test, uh, tasks or setups that you can do to massively improve your MDO experience on that platform. So let's begin. All right, so this video is going to go through tips and tricks on how to set up and which options to enable, disable, and how to actually uh, configure your books device. It doesn't matter if it's uh, Tab Ultra, Tab X, uh, if it's Nova Air 1, 2, Note Air 1, 2, it doesn't matter. It, it works exactly the same on all of the uh, devices, and uh, all of the options are available on all of the same devices. So it applies to any the books device that you have that's been released in recent generations or at least three, four, three years, I think. So there's actually a couple of things that I normally do to set up uh, my uh, MDO document to work properly. One of the first things that I do have as an issue on books document, on, on books reader, is that the palm rejection for my style of writing is really bad because it just constantly flips pages and does things like that. That means that when I use the MDO, it just flips pages around. So there are several things that I do to ensure that that doesn't happen. The first one that I do is actually to adjust the touch areas of the Neo Reader so that they are not in the majority of the screen here. And you do that by exposing, tapping in the middle to expose the menu. Then you go to the settings of the new reader. Then you have touch settings. And here you have touch area settings. By default, they are set to mode one, which is the entire screen. So wherever your palm ends, something is going to get triggered and the likelihood of an accidental page swipe is actually quite high. I've noticed that for my needs, mode six works actually the best because then the touch areas are limited to the upper region of the screen um, only. And the interface of and the design of the MDO is such that you don't do much interaction, touch interactions uh, with the upper part of the interface at all. So this whole area here with the block sign, this is the no touch zone. So the device is not recognizing touch at all in here. And therefore, only in this area here, you will have back, forward and menu. So that would be point number one that I would add. And that actually solves the area. So I can just tap in these areas here for the menu, next page, etc. However, you'll notice that I can swipe and still the page swipes. What gives? Well, that's because of this icon here, the little touch icon on the side that you can see, not this one, but this one above it with a single finger, that's a touch icon. So this one is currently enabled, but I'm going to disable it here. And now you will notice that the touch doesn't work. However, I can't flip pages either. What gives? Why can't work with it? Well, that's one of the things that I believe is a bug. So this is, as far as I understand it, this is not how it's supposed to work because the no touch zone should be a no touch zone. I don't know if that's how they want to design it or not, but it's not something that, uh, for me at least, it doesn't feel natural. So the next thing that I do when I change the touch mode and disable the touch icon itself is to actually go to the custom floating toolbar option. And here you have a bunch of stuff that is hidden that you can add to your 
um, floating toolbar. Well, the first thing that I do is I switch it to vertical and I lower the size to 70% so that it doesn't interfere with the user interface of the uh, MDO. That is totally optional because you can just hide it, unhide it, but that's just how I set it. So you can do that, but you don't have to. The whole point here is to add to, uh, to make sure that you have two options added to your toolbar. The handwriting tool should be there, which is there by default, but you should definitely add the handwriting switcher. And it's this one here. It looks like that. So you can add icons and options by simply click and hold and then drag it on top and then rearrange it wherever you want to place it. So for example, I could add settings Let's see, I can just go add settings to my main toolbar there, and then I arrange it that way. So the handwriting switcher is the important one. And why? Well, because when you flip on handwriting disabled, then the pen now acts as a touch. And now when I touch on the touch areas here, page next, menu, and even interacting with the um, with the hyperlinks can be done with the pen. And actually, that's my preferred method. I will interact with the pen, navigate around it. Then I simply tap on this one when I need to write. I write and make an entry and then switch back and then continue navigating that way. So that way I have complete control over what is going on and in which mode I am. The handwriting toolbar is the one that's needed for that's where you choose your tools, of course. So that's why it's needed to actually be there. But this is the main section and how I use it. Another one that I also use is the region zoom. So I tend to kind of just simply use the region zoom to zoom in into an area here if I needed to keep a zoom on it or something like that. But I don't necessarily need too much of it. In some cases, I do want to use pinch to zoom. And that is why I also added the pinch to zoom icon here in the toolbar, just in individualities where I do want to use it. And on the tab devices, this is something that's extremely, extremely easy to use. And it's really, really responsive. So you can very, very easily use it. The only thing to remember is that it will not work if your touch is disabled. So you have to have that touch enabled for the uh, pinch to zoom to actually work as you would want it to work. So that's something to uh, definitely keep in mind. I, I think that it would be ideal uh, that I wouldn't need to enable disable touch. And that would work if the touch zone would properly work. But as you've seen, I mean, I can still swipe here. And as long as I can swipe, that means that the palm rejection can happen. So until they fix that issue and have the zones actually working properly, my preferred method is basically to have uh, touch zone mode six enabled that I have my uh, handwriting uh, uh, toggle also added to the toolbar that I disable my touch and that I add my uh, pinch to zoom icon to the toolbar so that I can use it when I need to. So when I set it up like that, then I have excellent, excellent functionality over uh, MDO. One other option that I also tend to use is that I can actually go to format and I go to fit with. So if I fit with, it's going to fit it like this. But if I have my auto rotation on, which I do, it means that when I flip it over to horizontal mode, it is now uh, nicely flipped here. So I can easily flip between pages and also between these modes here. And because I'm using my pen now as a touch, I can simply use the pen as this one here. And then there's no need for zooming as I can actually see 
all of these areas here. So that's something that also is uh, kind of useful in certain situations, but realistically, I tend to use it most in the regular mode because I don't really uh, mind the region zoom. In fact, that's something that I do prefer uh, and I find it to be quite, quite easy to use. And also the uh, pinch to zoom is, as I said, really, really easy to use. And there's a little bit of satisfaction to it, but that's on the tab devices. Other devices are a little bit slower and there I would actually recommend to use simply the region zoom and then you just have it like this and then you zoom out and that's that. I hope that you found the information in this video useful or helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description below to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide. Also, if you're more interested to learn more about the MDO or My Daily Organizer, if you want to get it, just go to the mydeepguide.com slash shop and you'll find it there. And if you want even more information, you'll find in the description down below a dedicated playlist with lots of videos and tons of information which would clarify if MDO is a product that you might be interested or not. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye!